Elon Musk is no stranger to making bold predictions on the future of autonomous cars. In an interview with ARK Invest, Musk gave a timeline of what he expects for fully autonomous cars will be ready to hit the road. Uh, before we take a listen to that, though, I want to bring in Tasha Keeney. She's an analyst at ARK Investments who was with Elon Musk when he said this. So first of all, tell us like how this whole podcast came about. Yeah, so um, actually through Twitter, Musk's favorite platform, um, he saw a, a clip of me talking about Tesla. Um, Arc, at Arc, we do a lot of original research, yep. and we focused a lot on their autonomous data advantage. So he, he messaged me, and he said, great analysis, and then I asked him to be on our podcast. Um, but he messaged you. Wow. He did. Yeah, like a DM. Yes. <laughs> and why you keep the DMs open. And, and what did you do? Um, so we asked him to be on the podcast and, you know, to our, to our surprise and, and happiness, he agreed. Um, but he's, he's also, he's familiar with ARC because we've been very vocal about Tesla for a long time. Kathy, our CIO, had written a letter when they were thinking of going private. So he was, yeah. he was familiar And with asking us. them not to go private. It's one of your biggest holdings. You have to, like, exactly. rebalance and make sure, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. and you are a huge bull on the stock, you have a $4,000 long-term price target, still mm -hmm. fair to say? Yes, just it's to, one of our top positions. Just to get that out there. Okay, so now let's dive into what Elon actually said. Uh, here is a clip from your guys' podcast. My guess as to when we would think it's safe for somebody to essentially fall asleep and wake up the destination, probably towards the end of next year. That's that's when I, when I would think it's most likely it will be safe enough for that. I don't know when regulators will agree. I thought it was interesting how much he talked about regulation, actually. And you guys asked him about regulation as well. He is very optimistic on how autonomous is going. Like mm -hmm. he just said, he thinks somebody's going to be able to fall asleep in, in the car mm -hmm. and be okay. At another point, he said, like, this year, you could be picked up in the parking lot by your car. Why so much focus on regulation from you guys and also in his mind? Yeah, you know, I think, um, well, as, as we add more autonomous features, regulation becomes, it comes into play a bit more. And I, I think in general, um, Musk has been a little bit more balanced on, on what he's been saying about autopilot. So I, I think that's why he wanted to highlight that aspect. Um, but, you know, overall in the U.S., we've seen a lot of positive things on the regulation side. I mean, we're really the first country to allow companies to test on public roads. And that's huge. I mean, you need that in order to teach a car to drive. Um, so I think luckily we'll be one of the first countries to get autonomous driving and Tesla could be one of the first companies to bring it to us. Now, something else uh, that I thought was interesting is, you know, he, he again reiterated what she said a few times, that it's just simply safer for people to not be driving cars. You know, all the data backs it up. And I think we all intuitively know that. I mean, driving is pretty dangerous. Um, it's gotten a lot safer, but humans are really not that good at driving cars. Um, but it kind of is related to something else he said, which is that he's an engineer, right? He's not like a finance guy. And I think um, I guess I would just ask, like, when you talk to him, does he is is he aware of the fact that like everyone does know self-driving cars are safer, but there's just that like emotional thing of like if there's a death in a self-driving car, it seems like it's more important than a death in a car a human's driving, even though it happens at an infinitesimal rate relative to vehicle deaths, um, you know, in in human-operated uh, car accidents. Yeah, you know, I think. Uh, I think Musk being an engineer really shines through. I, I mean, not just in, in talking with him, but in the company strategy, the fact that they're, they started as a software company, they're highlighting the technology so much, he clearly spends a lot of time with the autopilot team. Um, I think, uh, you know, in, in terms of the uh, a death in an autonomous car, so at ARC we've predicted that um, looking at the accident rate in airplanes, that um, fully autonomous driving will reduce accidents by 80%. Mm -hmm. but that's not 100%. Um, I think Tesla is acutely aware of this because they every time a Tesla crashes, it's deal. a big deal. Yeah. It doesn't even matter if autopilot is on or not. Right. If a Tesla, Tesla crash, it crashes, it's in the news way more so than any other automaker. Um, so, so I, I, I think that they're they're aware of that fact. But you know, the the more important thing again, what regulators want to what regulators want to see, and what Tesla has said, um, their discussions have been with those regulators is you need to prove that it's safer than a human. Um, so Tesla's really uniquely set up to do that because they have all this data 
data that no one else has. They have billions of miles of data. So Tasha, I'm curious to hear about what your takeaway was in terms of the biggest concern that Elon has at the moment. Is he focused a lot you know, primarily on the safety end of things? Because another thing that kind of folds into this is just the production, right? Tesla has very ambitious uh, scale that they would like to build in China uh, and domestically here in the US. But obviously, there are reliability concerns. We've seen some of the headlines with the Model 3 and the reliability uh, today even. Um, what's the kind of feel that you got from Elon in terms of where his focus is kind of are right now? So, you know, I think you're absolutely right. The Model 3 is a big focus for Tesla right now. They just started delivering cars to Europe and China. Um, in terms of safety, I mean that Tesla cars have proven themselves to be much safer, certainly than a gas-powered car um, in, in many ways. I mean, even just the design of having the battery sort of at the bottom of the car helps with that. Um, it allows you to put in um, more components that, that help in a crash, basically. They have a, a larger crumple zone. Um, so I, I, I think they're, they're really focused on production of the Model 3, and they should be. We want them to get as many cars on the road as possible because they act as R&D centers, and then they'll eventually enable autonomous driving. So when you were talking about trying to get as many cars on the road as possible, I mean, some of his estimates were even above what you guys are modeling for. Did you find that surprising? Do you, is it believable? I, I don't find it surprising because Elon Musk, uh, he has a very aggressive estimates for the company. He sets very aggressive goals and they've fallen short of those goals in the past, but they still achieve the impossible. I mean, they're still doing these incredible things. They might do them a month or two late, uh, but they do them. So yeah, when, he takes point with that. He says like, "Oh, I just do it, but I'm six months late." And right. yeah, when what do you're you doing that? something he, exponentially, what did he call that? It wasn't calendaring, but yeah, something about how like if you if you're two weeks late, it calendar goes break crazy. point, calendar mm -hmm. break point, right? Exactly. 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 So we're used to that. So in our models, you know, we might put a 20 to 50 percent margin on the timeline of what he says, but I mean, if you achieve fully autonomous driving, that's still an amazing technological breakthrough. So we don't care if he's a month or two late, because uh, they'll probably be first still. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, this happens to pretty much every interview we do. You walk out and you say, oh, I really wanted to ask him that question. I forgot. What did you really want to ask him that you didn't get to? Oh, well, there are so many questions that we have for Tesla. Um, so, you know, it, well, we, the one you're kicking yourself about. The one I'm kicking myself about. Uh, well, one thing that's pretty unique about Tesla is they don't have a remote operator network planned for their autonomous cars. So this is something that uh, companies like um, Aptiv, for instance, the Delphi spinoff, have talked about. It's basically like a teleoperation center that helps the car in times of need when you go to full autonomous. Uh, Tesla hasn't talked about that before. Um, we didn't get to that question, but uh, and you know, um, there's millions of questions that we could have asked about batteries. That's also a big focus for us at Ark Invest. But we we tried to keep it to autonomous driving. Yeah. One day, and Elon will answer all of our questions. One, One day. One day, Elon will come on this show. <laughs> Maybe. We hope. Uh, we need all right. to get our bat phone. Yeah, uh, Tasha Keeney, Ark Invest, thank you so much. Great podcast. Really good to see you. Thanks for having me.